Who thinks they could do this in a year? I'm just curious. Let me see your hands. You could do it, frankly, without most of the strategies you're learning here. So what I want you to do is just take the numbers and make them closer to your business. Let's say you got a business that's a $2 million business, right? Take the same formula, and what happens? You go from a $2 million business to what size business in less than a year? Come on, guys, what? Well, you can make it 2.6 just by doing 10, 10, 10, or you can make it a $5 million business by doing 33, 25, and 50%. How many follow this? If you go, those numbers are boring to me, add a zero. Take your $20 million business and make it a what? If it was a $20 million business and we're gonna use the same formula, it would be 50 million. You're gonna jump proportionately. $100 million businesses, just add a zero. I started with the most simple zero because then you, it's believable to you. But the ratio doesn't change based on the size of the business. So here's what I want you to do. Turn the page and do your formula right now. By the way, who here feels certain you could find a way to increase new number of clients by 10%. Raise your hand, let me see if you really believe that. Say aye. aye. Anybody not think you could find a way to get 10% more clients if it was your total focus? Total focus, okay? Second, anybody here who feels certain you could find a way to get 10% more money, that's it, per transaction by either added value, additional product, whatever it takes. Who here feels you could absolutely do that? Raise your hand, say aye. aye. Great, who here can find a way to get 10% more purchasing time or referrals? Raise your hand, say aye. Great, then I want you to do this now. Flip the page, and right now, my time's ending, so you gotta do your job. How many clients or customers do you currently have? You fill it up there, it was filled in in the blank up there. Go ahead and put it up there. How many clients do you currently have? What's the average value per sale? How often do they buy back from you? What's the size of your business? Now, if right now you're rolling your eyes, that means you don't know the answers to these questions. That means you really don't know how to run your business. The first thing you better know is how many clients you have. You gotta know what the average transaction is. And you certainly wanna know how often they're buying from you. Otherwise, you really don't know anything about the fundamental matrix of your business. Here's the good news, if you don't know it, can you go find this out, yes or no? Yes. Not hard to do. Do an estimate if you don't know. Do an estimate. Start out with what you have. The size of my business currently is X million, X whatever. Work backwards. How many new clients, how many total clients do we serve in a year? Some of you thought of them as customers. You can use that word if it helps you get back to what they were, because many of them were customers for you. How much on average do those people pay? How often do they buy? And then all I want you to do is fill that in and then below it, add 10%, 10%, 10% and calculate the number. And you will know your plan. Or if you want to grow it 250%, add 33, add the 25, add the 50. We're gonna give you, since I'm done and I did it in less than 15 minutes, we'll give you five to come up with your formula, go. How many have been able to complete this? Let me see your hands. How many have come up with this? Great. If you got a question, two or three quick questions, I try to answer a few. The biggest question I'm hearing from several people, uh, Mark, are you over there? Where are you, Mark? Yeah, Mark, would you share your question so we give a perfect example? Give me hands, Mark, ladies and gentlemen. No, I said it's Mark, ladies and gentlemen. Share with him your question because it's the nature of many people's questions. Tell them what business you're in, too, if you would. We're, we're a commercial general contractor, so we build uh, hotels, casinos, retail around the country, and uh, obviously the market's uh, changed quite a bit. Our sales are off by about 50%, and uh, my question was, is how can I, how can I increase um, the average dollar per sale when no one's buying, um, yeah. and increase the customer base as well when Everybody is price driven and there's just not a whole lot of uh, that type of work going on these days. So. so two things I want you to notice. Ask and you shall what? Ask a lousy question, you get a lousy what? How come I can never lose weight? Because you're a pig. <laughs> <laughs> if you ask that question of your own mind, your brain's gonna go, because you're a pig. I'm using the example of what happens in people's minds. How many know what I'm talking about here? Say aye. If you say, how can I lose weight? Your brain will say, well, go on a diet, but that's painful, so I'm not doing it. But if you said, how can I lose weight, totally lose weight, and completely enjoy the process, and you kept asking that question, expecting an answer from a state of what? Uncertainty or certainty, which one? Certainty. Your brain goes, you know, 
years ago I used to play racquetball or basketball one-on-one or something, and I wasn't really exercising. I was having what? And I was in the best shape of my life. If you ask a better quality question with an absolute expectation and keep asking it, you're going to get an answer. But notice the questions he asked me. They both had built-in presuppositions that they couldn't be fulfilled. How do I do this when it's impossible is basically what he said in both questions. How many follow this? So I didn't let that happen. I just said to him, I, I didn't say, oh, no, the market's going to change or, oh, no, people will pay more money. I didn't see either one of those things. Instead, I met his world. I came to him instead of saying, well, just as you heard with roofing contractors, you can absolutely change somebody who's price driven to something else with education marketing. When they start to see it's more risky to pay that price, but that's your job to come up with that core story. I didn't tell him that. That would have been one way to do it. I said to him instead, when you're trying to do this, you're presupposing that this is the only product you can offer. You're presupposing. This is what we do. We do about six projects a year, he told me, of what, uh, five million each? Yeah, five million bucks each. So we have this $30 million business. We do these six million projects, or these six projects, five million bucks each. And, you know, the market's just not doing it right now. And I said, maybe it's time for you to invent a new product. Remember, what is business? Innovation and marketing. If you're not going to innovate, you're going to eat it. You can market all you want. Sometimes you have to innovate. And I said, what season do you think the industry's in right now? What season is it? Well, oh, winter. I said, how long do you think winter's going to last? He said, about a year and a half. I said, I hope so. How many think it could be more than a year and a half for the construction industry? Everybody in everybody else's industry except his seems to think that. The reason is because we don't want to face the level of change we need to make, even though it may be the best thing that ever happened to them. Let's assume that a year and a half from now, the industry explodes and new casinos are opening all over Vegas. Ah. Let's just assume that all came together perfectly. Then he'd be back in the business he was in. Maybe the greatest thing that ever happened in his entire life was this thing collapsing. Because now he has to create something brand new with the same resources, people. He thinks, wow, there's a different need out there. There's a need right now. People are aging. I'm making this up. This is completely wrong. People are aging, and the only place they can go is these not even hospitals, these horrible places nobody here would want to put, who had any caring for their parent, would want to put their parent. And yet people at the same time can't keep, take care of them at home very often. What if we built facilities that were like residential facilities? Completely wrong idea. And we did them in partnership with the state that has funds for it. And oh my gosh, we could do something that actually took the millions of people that are getting older, the baby boomers, they're turning 65, one every 10 seconds. And wow, the value of that real estate is going to go up because, by the way, that real estate's a necessity. This real estate's an accessory. Now, it's very different. We might not do $5 million projects. Maybe we do, instead of six $5 million projects, we do $31 million projects. Maybe we do 35. Maybe we make $35 million. And well, by the way, you know, you're not negotiating across the table with somebody like Steve Wynn. We might actually have a better margin. You know, instead of a casino. Hmm, I'm making this up. It's probably the stupidest idea on earth. The point is there's an idea that isn't stupid. How many follow what I'm talking about here? See, when I'm listening to you guys, my brain's racing. And my brain's racing going, get out of your box. Your box is, this is my business. No, that's not. Your business is resourcefulness. Your business is meeting needs. Your business is adding more value to people than anybody else dreamed of. Your business is your creativity. Your business is your people and resources and ideas. When you start falling in love with your product, you're screwed. Because eventually that product's going to be out of date no matter how good it is, no matter how many years or decades you've been doing it for. And I said, by the way, what if it's not turned around a year and a half from now? Wouldn't now be the time for you to be coming up with a new product or service? How many follow what I'm talking about here? Somebody asked me a similar question saying, you know, I'm in the business of insurance and a client's, I get the price is fixed by the insurance companies. And, you know, they don't really do the referrals. I said the same thing. You have this delusion that this is the only product you can sell. Maybe the way you do this formula is you keep that business fixed, but now you have the new business with this ratio of these new products or services you can offer the same clients. This is the creativity. This is what's going to change your life and business. By the way, in the beginning, it's scary, or maybe it's exciting. 
Maybe there's a part of you that's been yearning for a long time to be growing again and feel alive because progress equals happiness. He starts making progress on this, even if he's not there yet, he and his organization will come to life. People are gonna feel like, man, this is it. Maybe this really was a gift. The guy that worked for Lehman Brothers, or woman, who used to get up out of Connecticut or wherever they were and get on the train and spend three and a half hours going back and forth to work every day, and they gotta be there by 6.37 or eight in the morning and they get home at 10 or 11 at night and they don't know their kids and they don't know their husband or wife and their health is deteriorating and they're making lots of money. Maybe the best thing that ever happened in their lifetime was for Lehman to go under. Because now they get to reinvent their life based on the new season and the new nature and what they really want and why they're doing it all in the first place. Is this making sense to you? These guys, these next four or five days, give yourself the gift to say, I'm gonna work harder than I've ever worked on the business, not in the damn thing. You guys work hard in your business all the time. We all know this distinction intellectually, but how often are you really doing it? That's why we'll go day and night. Listen, I can make this a hell of a lot easier on me and you, I can just pop in and out and do nothing. I wanna make sure when you leave in these five days, you leave with a plan that you can look yourself in the eye and go, if I screw up, it's gonna be like this. That's the goal we have here. And so you don't have to do it all. But I do suggest this. The other way you chunk is when all that stuff's in your head, you still got it in short-term memory right now. But you won't by morning. Now you may have written it down, but you're gonna then have to take time to go review all this stuff again. So here's what I do as a practice. When I wanna master something, when I was learning neurolinguistic programming, I'd sit in a class and we'd go all day and their idea was like, you know, nine to noon and then noon to like three. <laughs> you know? And everybody's like, wow, that was a long day, right? See, my view is, if you're really building something and you got this and people go, well, I have no time to build a business. You know, I'm, I'm working, you know, nine to five. Well, what are you doing from seven to two? <laughs> that's the second shift. If your business isn't going, that's the shift you better take on because your family deserves it, you deserve it. If you did it for a short period of time, you'll have such a new momentum that you can have a job that's working three or four hours a day. But if you don't do what's necessary, when it gets winter, I gotta tell you something, you gotta work harder in winter. You gotta go out and chop the wood and bring it in, but you also can ski and snowboard and do all those other cool things. It's a different game. But here's what I do right now. You got so much you pulled in today. Here's what I did when I learned NLP. I'd sit down and I would just write out two lists. One list was every principle or distinction I could pull out of my head while it was still there. I made myself, see, everything you've ever seen, heard, taste, touched, or smelled is in your nervous system. But it gets stored but if you don't retrieve it in short, a short period of time, you don't get the ability to really retrieve it very well. It's not linked up. But if while it's in your memory, you quickly go grab it, you set up the retrieval system, you'll be able to get it again. So I'm gonna ask you to do this every night and we're gonna do it right now for just five minutes. So what distinctions did you make today that could absolutely change your business forever? Well, you just learned one. I just learned the three, the formula, the three-step formula for growing my business by a third to 250% that I know is totally doable. So I'd write down the principle, and I'd write down if there was an action item. Like some of you right now, when you go home, you shouldn't leave this whole binder, you should be able to go to the back of this binder and go, here's my action list. I'll decide when I'm gonna do it later, or I'm gonna lock down when, and I'm gonna make sure I follow through and implement this. How many think this three-step plan would be invaluable for you to be focusing on ongoing? Raise your hand if you believe this would make a difference. Say I. Great, so I'd write down the principle, and I'd write down an action item. And if you don't know the number, then I say, I'm gonna get the number of clients, I'm gonna call someone tomorrow, I write down an action item. I'm gonna make sure I get the number of clients, I'm gonna find out what our average is, or I'm gonna call my accountant, get them to do it for me, or I'm gonna meet with my team when we get home and we're gonna establish this is the plan. You don't just take the information in and go, isn't that interesting? You come up with principles and action plans. What other distinction did you make today that was valuable? Any little one, you could go, you know, I made that distinction about you know, education marketing, I knew the distinction before, but I'm not doing it. Here's what I heard different tonight. I heard this story, that triggers me. That story about the shoes, you know, really thinking about to the point that all these different things that'll make somebody, the nerves in their feet, this, I need to look at that in my business. You write down the principle and you're like, okay, action item. I'm gonna figure out what's the equivalent. What's gonna be my core story? Or I'm gonna hire Empire. Or I'm gonna say, screw you Empire, I'm gonna go to your website and I'm gonna go do it myself, but make it an action item. So principles, stories, action items, you got five minutes right as fast as you can. Make two columns. One of those is any principle, any story, any distinction that'll trigger a memory in you. The other is the action item. Go for it now.